Well, it's that time to review the final book in the Divergent Trilogy, and I'm very excited to review this. I've loved this trilogy. It's one of my favorite series of all time, not just recently, but of all time. It's a great book. If you enjoy science fiction, if you enjoy young adult, almost any genre, I think you can find something you'll like in the Divergent Trilogy. If you haven't read the first book in the trilogy yet, Divergent, I strongly encourage you to go out and get it. It's an awesome book. I think once you read it, you'll fall in love with the book and really want to read the rest of the trilogy. I have done reviews for both Divergent and Insurgent, which is the second book in the trilogy, on this channel. So I'll put links to that in the description box below. Check those out if you're interested in learning more. Um, like I said, if you haven't read the series yet, go out and get Divergent. And I think once you read it, you'll definitely want to read the other two books in the series. So for a short recap, just to kind of catch everybody up to where we're at in this series, Divergent kind of introduces the world. This is set sometime in the future, they never really give that exact time. It's set in the city of Chicago, and basically this new society that's came about um, is divided by factions based on people's personalities and traits. Um, it's not clear what's going on outside of Chicago and Divergent. All we know is what's going inside the city in this faction system that's been introduced. And basically the world as it exists in this series of Divergent is at the age of 16, um, teenagers take this test that kind of lets them know which faction they would be best suited for. And they've already been raised in one faction, whatever faction their parents belong to. Um, but at 16 they take this test and then the next day they have a choosing ceremony where the teenager can choose which faction they would like to join. They don't have to go along with the test results. The test results just kind of lets them know what they would be best suited for, but they can really choose any faction. The vast majority of people choose to stay in the faction they are raised in. But that's not always the case. And when it does, when somebody does decide to leave their faction, it's a very um, complicated issue. It really kind of splits the family, so it's very hard to do. So the main character in Divergence, Trish, um, when she tests out, it's discovered that she's divergent, which basically means um, she has the characteristics of several of the factions, which is very, very rare and makes her, um, it's very dangerous for her, it's actually a threat. The facts, the people that control the faction system view people who are divergent as a threat against the system, so she has to hide the fact that she's divergent. And Trish, for a variety of reasons, decides to join a new faction, Dauntless, which is a very interesting faction. It's this faction that's kind of breeds soldiers, um, policemen, physical conflict, very thrill-seeking, and Trish joins this world, and this is what basically sets up the plot of Divergent. Great book. The character development in this book is amazing. The interaction between Trish and the, uh, the other main character, Four, is great. The world that Veronica Roth creates is amazing. Divergent is a great first book in a trilogy. Insurgent picks off exactly where the accent and Divergent wraps up, and basically the faction system begins to break down and a civil war breaks out. Some people are fighting to maintain the faction-based system. Other ones are trying to basically take over the city and create a new order. And the characters that we were introduced into Divergent basically are thrown into this situation. Some choose to try to maintain the status quo. Others are fighting to overthrow it. So you get people on opposite sides that were friends and now suddenly they're fighting for different things. They have really strange relationships. People being questioned, you know, is this person my friend? Um, you know, do we have the same values? What's what's going on here? And all this chaos really makes people question who they are and what they really believe in. It's a very interesting um, second follow-up book. I enjoyed Divergent more than Insurgent, uh, but it's still a great follow-up to Divergent. And I really love the ending to Insurgent because it really set up the third book in the trilogy very, very interestingly. After I remember reading Insurgent, I thought, well, wow, I can't wait to see where the third book in this trilogy goes. And I was not disappointed, and that's where we get to the review today in Allegiant, the third and final book in the series by Veronica Roth. And this is one of the few series that I can say this about. The last book in the series is my favorite by far. Divergent would probably be my second favorite, Insurgent would be my least favorite. I love them all. Um, I would really rate this, you know, if I'm doing it on a scale of 1 to 10, this is pretty close to perfect. This is like a 9.7 to 9.8, you know, Divergent, maybe like a, a 9, you know, somewhere on that scale. Insurgents, maybe an 8, but, you know, usually a lot of series, the 
first book's awesome, and with each book, it starts falling apart a little bit. Uh, for example, I love the Hunger Games series, but I really don't like the last book in the series. I love the Maze Runner series. I really don't like the last book. The Divergent trilogy really does not go along with that. Like I said, I think Allegiant is the best book by far. It's very interesting where Veronica Roth took the storyline. So if you haven't read the book yet, I'll try not to really do any plot spoilers, so feel free to keep on watching. But if you don't, if you want to go into the book with a completely fresh outlook, this is a good place to stop. All right, so we'll go on from here. So basically, the action of Legion picks up right after the action of Insurgent, and that's one thing I really love about this trilogy. There's no time to period between the books. You know, it basically picks off the very instant that the previous book ends. So like that. So basically, the civil war that broke out in Insurgent basically destroyed the faction-based system. And now the characters are in this world that's, the factions no longer exist, but some are still craving to try to recreate the faction-based system. Other ones, they don't know what to do. Others want to try to leave the city and see what's outside the city. Um, so that's the scenario we're off with at the beginning of Allegiant. Uh, Trish, again, is the driving force behind this book, and she really feels like her and her friends have to get out of Chicago, out of the city, and see what is outside, and to see, one, if it can help bring peace back to the city, and also, I actually just wants to know what's going on, and I actually thinks if, if they go outside the city, that she'll find out really what was going on in the city. It's clear at this point that there was some sort of experiment going on in the city, that the outside groups were controlling what was going on in the city, and I think Trish just wants to know, what's the meaning of all this? What's the purpose of this? So she um, spearheads uh, escape from the city. All her friends um, kind of are a part of it. Of course, four, uh, or slash Tobias, whatever you want to call them, heads out with Triss. They are able to escape, um, and it really is going fairly well at that point until during the escape, um, they run into some people trying to keep people inside the city. A uh, member of their escape party is, I really won't say who that is, um, and that's where the, I guess, the, <laughs> the plot begins to spiral out of control, out of the control of Four and Trish. Um, they kind of lose control, and uh, they're thrown into this world that they don't understand, and it quickly becomes clear um, that the reality they knew inside the city was really completely fabricated, that um, what they thought was true is not. And um, after they escape the city, they're taking to basically the group that's been controlling the experiment in Chicago. Um, so I really won't get into details what the experiment is and why the experiment was being undertaking, because I'll be too much plot spoilers, but basically that's where the action of the third book is set. While our characters from the city are basically now interacting with the people that are running the experiment. Some people in the group embrace the experiment, other ones are a little skeptical, um, and really it throws off everybody's like, sense of where they belong. People begin questioning themselves. Um, who am I? What's important? All the stuff I knew when I was in the city has now been proven to be basically almost wasted. You know, who, who am I? Am I still the same person? Um, what do I need to be in the future? Um, can I be a part of this new society that I've suddenly been introduced to? So a lot of um, stress put on the relationships, especially between Trish and Four, as they try to, I guess, reinvent themselves but at the same time maintain this relationship they've been building with each other. The character development in this book is absolutely amazing. Um, Ron Groff does an amazing, amazing job of sending the characters in different directions, having each one develop in their own pace in different ways, and at the same time, you know, kind of coming together in the end in a mutual understanding. It's a beautiful character development of the book, and one of the best uses of character development I have ever seen, honestly. Um, the ending of the book is amazing. Um, she took the series in a very different way than a lot of trilogies um, in young adults or series in young adults or even sci-fi goes, um, which kind of made it unpredictable. Um, you know, after you read it, then he, after I finished it, he kind of, well, he, I guess now, looking back, that was a great choice to make, but when you're reading it, you just don't expect it to go that way. You kept on expecting something to happen, and it doesn't. Once you read this book, I think you'll understand what I'm talking about. But it's one of those few series, when I finished the book, I was like, wow, that's a great ending to the series. 
and I don't really feel there's a need for another book. You know, sometimes the series will end, and you really enjoy the last book, but there's some stuff left unresolved. Like, God, I wish there was one more book. This one that Veronica Roth wraps up the storyline of the series so well that I would I almost would, even though I love the characters and the storyline in this trilogy, I almost would hate to see another book set after Allegiant because the storyline was wrapped up so well in this book. She did a perfect job, in my opinion. Now, she could always set other books in this world and maybe explore different characters. But I think these group of characters, um, their story was really told so well in this trilogy, and it was, the conclusion to their storyline was done so well that I don't see a need for another book. So I think she did a great job of this trilogy. Um, it didn't feel rushed. It didn't feel contrived. It was beautifully done, and I really enjoyed it. So if you enjoyed the first two books in the series, go out and get Allegiant right away and read it, because you will absolutely love it, in my opinion. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And I'm sorry if this review is a little long, but just very passionate about this trilogy. It's one of the best series I've read ever, period. So I hope you enjoyed the review. Um, let me know what you thought about this trilogy in the comment section below. Please don't mention any plot spoilers in the comments. I'd hate for anybody that hasn't had a chance to read Allegiant yet to have the storyline spoiled by a comment. So please keep that in mind. Um, anyway, like I said, hope you enjoy the review. Hope you've had a chance to read Allegiant. If you haven't, go read it ASAP. See you next time.